Welcome to Cozy with Jill and Lisa. It is our December episode and we are so happy to have you watching us to help help us ring in the holidays and we're going to be sharing a few things with you that will hopefully make your holidays a little bit simpler and a little bit cozier. That's right. And we are in the Octagon House in Watertown. And this building is amazing. If you haven't come uh, to visit, you certainly should. Um, and you have a chance. There's going to be a play going on um, Saturday and Sunday, the Nutcracker. Um, after the Saturday and Sunday after Thanksgiving will be the Nutcracker. And then the following Sunday will be um, Tour of Homes. And so there's been a lot of volunteers that have come around and helped decorate. So it's really kind of a fun place to be. And, and it's cozy. <laughs> and a lot of historical sites are decorated for the holidays. So mm -hmm. it's a really special time if you have an opportunity to go visit them and check them out with all of the holiday decor. Um, it can really add a little extra bit of uh, festivity yeah. and something and joy different to the holidays mm -hmm. yeah. and it's kind of calm too so yeah so that's good so that's good so as we always do we'll start out with journal entry which of course I didn't do <laughs> but I have it up here um, so my favorite moment was the last Thursday the last day when it was warm outside mm -hmm. it was tropical it felt like Florida and we all knew that the following day it was going to drop 40 degrees and that's probably going to be the end so I was outside at night, watching the moon, sitting in my hot tub. <laughs> I was very cozy. So, I mean, I and I think because we knew it was going to get cold, you just appreciate that warm mm -hmm. weather even more. At least I did. So Definitely. Yeah. What about um, you? Well, kind of tail doving off of, dovetailing off of the weather. Yeah. Um, the last weekend of October when Watertown had the pumpkin palooza. Mm -hmm. The weather was also so beautiful that Saturday and they had the trick-or-treating downtown and the community-wide trick-or-treating. And typically I don't get into Halloween, um, but this year for some reason it was just so nice to sit outside while the kids were coming up to get candy at our house and um, we had some friends that brought their kids to our house that we hadn't seen in a really long time. Um, so that was really nice. Um, and then just yesterday, our niece, who is turning 11 next week, came to spend the, the day with uh, my husband and I to celebrate her 11th birthday. And so it was just so sweet to spend that time with her and um, play games and go shopping. And Nice. Yes. It's yeah. always moments that we treasure when we get to spend oh, with her and her for sisters. sure. Yeah. It has nothing to do with money. You know, oh, no. people always no. think you got to spend a lot of money to have a good time. And that's just not true because that's the stuff you forget the most, mm -hmm. right? So, so yeah, so we got those. Um, so holidays, of yes. course, we think about entertaining and we get all stressed out mm -hmm. and we think we have to do so much. And, you know, we always feel it on your shoulders, you know, and they're up <laughs> like this. But, you know, you just have to keep it simple. The whole point is that you're going to be with people that you like, you love, hopefully. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> um, So we came up with a, well, I shouldn't say that. We found a couple of really good ideas that might work when you're entertaining and things you can do ahead of time that you won't have to worry about then. You know, there's a lot of recipes out there, by the way, that are, um, I think it was Taste of Home this year, had quite a few recipes that you can do maybe the day ahead or you can do in a crock pot. So it's all things that you don't have to and freak out about. Um, but one of the things that I found that I really thought was a great idea was a hot chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. So you make hot chocolate in a crock pot um, and on low, I'm assuming, because you don't want it too hot. Because I was thinking coffee maker, but that would probably be way too hot. Um, and then you set out on a table where people can get at it. They can, you know, make their own, which is always good too. <laughs> get your guests to work. Yes. <laughs> uh, but there's all kinds of toppings. So there's a can of whipped cream. There's some caramel, um, you know, the, the drizzly caramel. There's chocolate chips. There's peppermint sticks. There's cinnamon sticks. All kinds of things that you could, th marshmallows, mm -hmm. of course. And the one that I saw, you see 
see the picture of um, they're in like uh, ball jars mm -hmm. and they had little tiny wooden scoops so you could scoop them out and put them in. It's like, what a great idea, you know, and it's good for adults and children. Um, another thought too is to have a theme party. And I know that seems like, oh, it's going to be really hard to do that. But we found one for the Polar Express that was really cute. It's a menu and it's good for kids. And there's all, like ideas, like trivia, things like that. So if you look, you can find something that's already done for you. And more than likely, it's going to be easy too. Yes. And the other one, which I thought was really fun, you know, we're all getting into the card, tutor card, card. Charcuterie. Charcuterie. Yes. Why did they come up with something I love a easier? Charcuterie. <laughs> charcuterie. Okay. Um, but they did it with candy and cookies, and you know, a few here and a few there, and you'll see a picture of it. Um, wrapped candies. They don't have to be something that you make yourself. There's a lot of wonderful bakeries out there, so you could go out and get a few really special cookies to put in there, and you know, sprinkle some hard candies around. Um, hard candy is beautiful, mm -hmm. so you can you could certainly do that. So those are all really. Um, um, easy ways to do it. And we're talking about cookies. So yes. there's something called a cookie swap. Yes. So if you don't want to have to make any cookies, um, or at least a lot of them, you can do a cookie swap. So yes. you you have one going on for your so work. I am actually hosting one where I work for our volunteers and our fosters. And it's one of those things where they say many hands make light work. Yes. So what we're doing is having each person who is attending make two to three dozen cookies plus another half dozen to one dozen for sampling. So the two to three dozen will be for the actual swap. Mm -hmm. And then however many you bring is however many you get to choose from the assortment to take home with you. And we're supplying the take home containers and people are just being asked to bring their cookies on a platter to mm -hmm. make it simpler for us, uh -huh. the hosts. Um, and it'll just be so much fun. You know, you get to sample several different recipes. Um, and I am actually having those who are participating email me the recipes so that I can print oh, them nice. out and have them available at the swap, which is just a nice extra little touch so that yeah, that's a you great have the idea. recipe to take home mm -hmm. with you. So we're very excited. I can't wait yeah. for our cookie swap. Well, that's such a great idea because I used to make, oh my gosh, 10 or 11 different kinds. And I gave, I had lots of people to give them to, but now I don't, I don't have that many mm -hmm. people to give them to anymore. And so that's the perfect way to get a variety. Um, the other thing is there's a number of uh, churches and organizations where you can go in and buy cookies by the pound or whatever they sell them for. So take advantage of that too. Those they're all homemade cookies mm -hmm. and you don't have to spend a lot of time making them because it can be stressful. Don't put the pressure on yourself, you know? Everything could be nice without having to get all crazy about yes. it. So much more enjoyable that Absolutely. Way. And what would Christmas be without Christmas sweaters? <gasps> yes. But Christmas they can get kind of pilly. I noticed that mine had little pills on it. So what should yes. I do, Lisa? So I see yours is cashmere, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite fabrics as yep. well, as is the one that I have on. So I tend to be a bit of a fiber snob, especially when it comes to sweaters. <laughs> I prefer sweaters um, that are natural fibers like uh, merino and oh, cashmere as yeah. opposed to the synthetic blends. But all sweater fibers tend to pill. Mm -hmm. But there are some real simple things that you can do to keep them looking nice and keep mm -hmm. them looking fresh. One thing that I like to use is a sweater comb, which is what this little thing is here. I got it at my local fabric store. Um, and all you have to do with this is just gently rub it along the pilled areas and it will, it's almost like an emery board. It'll just pick those little pills right up and um, keep things looking nice and refreshed. There are also battery or electric powered um, sweater shavers, which are available. I tend to stay away from those just because if you press too hard, you run the risk oh. of actually cutting into the yarns and the fibers. So you have to be really careful with mm -hmm. those. Yeah. Um, these are much easier to control the pressure with. Mm -hmm. So that's what I prefer to keep keep the pills at bay. That's anyway. right. Because <laughs> you get pills. No matter how you nice your fabric mm -hmm. is, you're going to get pills. And usually the more the less you pay for it, the more pills you're yes, going to get. That's, so, that's very true. Um, but you... it makes your sweater look better. And that actually works on sweatshirts too, yes, you know, when they start getting kind of icky. So something really inexpensive that can help you make your sweaters look nicer. Yes. What else do you have? So I have a couple other things here. Um, so there are a few options for keeping your sweaters fresh as far as laundering goes. 
Some of them you really want to be careful with, though. This one, for instance, is、um, a lamb's wool and cashmere blend, and it has this silk lining on the inside.、Uh. So this is one that I would never ever want to put in the washing machine,、um, just because it has the two different types of fabric.、Mm-hmm. So this one, I often use those at-home dry cleaning kits,、okay. which are so convenient and so simple to use if you just follow the directions.、Mm-hmm. Um, they're almost foolproof, and they just freshen everything up before you stash them away at the end of the season.、Mm-hmm. Um, if you have some sweaters that can actually be laundered, this is a product that I highly recommend, and I have been using for years. Okay, it's by the Laundress. And it is a wool and cashmere shampoo.、Ah. You can use this either to hand wash them in the sink or in the tub, or you can put a little bit of this in your washing machine on a hand washer gentle cycle.、Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's got a nice cedar scent, which we know is、oh, great for、yeah. the fine fabrics.、Mm-hmm. Um, you never ever ever want to put your sweaters in the dryer.、No. Um, <laughs> I recommend always. Always laying them flat to dry so that they don't get misshapen, or you can roll them up in a towel to get the excess moisture、yes. out, and then lay them flat. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then one last thing that I discovered works really well to keep your sweaters fresh, and I did not know this before. You can actually use a steamer,、uh-huh. which will kill all whatever bacteria、oh, is lingering in there, even if you think, oh, it doesn't look dirty,、yeah. you know. There's always some sort of、It's、skin, skin. fiber、yeah. or you know little food particles that、mm-hmm. are in there. So if you just take the steamer, that'll kill everything at the end of the season before、mm-hmm. you put it away and store it.、Um, that's a and, great idea. Yeah, I, they get hot. <laughs> they do get very hot. Yes.、Yeah. So that's how I take care of my sweaters.、Excellent. Her sweaters always look so good. Thank so, you. Yes. <laughs> so,、uh, story about a sweater. So seeing your picture, I found this beautiful burgundy cowl neck because they were really、mm-hmm. into it. That did. Um, and it was so gorgeous, and it was it was I think it was maybe a, a combination of, of cashmere lamb's wool kind of thing.、I、fell in love with it, spent more than I should have on it,、um, but of course I get it, I, I got it, and、um, my mom washed it <gasps> and put it in the dryer. Oh no! Yeah, but I still wore it for my picture. <laughs> It looks a little tight, but I still wore it. I kind of stretched it out, but oh yeah, you don't want to、oh, do、no. that. And she felt bad, but、yeah. <laughs> felt worse. That's so disappointing. <laughs> it is、yeah. so disappointing. So,、um, <laughs> yeah. So, what do we got up next? So next, we are going to talk about how to not overcommit yourself during the holidays. Yeah, that's huge. You know, there is just so much going on this time of year with.、Um, Church events or school events and concerts and、um, festivities, tree lightings, all that stuff. And I personally tend to want to do as much as possible, just because I love this time of year. But it can be so easy to overcommit yourself and just start feeling overwhelmed and stressed out, rather than、um, you know enjoying things and enjoying being in the moment. So、mm-hmm. I found. Um, an article with some really great tips about some a few simple things that we can do to sort of avoid some of that extra holiday stress.、Um, one one real simple tip, but this can be so hard to do, is just to say no.、Um, it's so hard、oh, to say. It's、no. so hard to say no. But don't feel like you have to be obligated to attend every party or every event that you're invited to. Because if you do, there's no question that you're going to get burnt out before、mm-hmm. the end of the holiday season.、Um, so one real easy suggestion is to, you know, just politely decline an invitation, but offer to meet that person after the holidays, maybe in the new year when things are a little bit slower. That's a great idea,、um, and something to look forward to、mm-hmm. that way.、Um, something else that you want to be sure you make time to do is rest, which is good both for your body so that you don't get sick. Um, and for your mind and your mental state as well.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really important. We tend to overdo it、mm-hmm. every single day, and you pay for it. Yes, definitely. The next two kind of go hand in hand. So don't be afraid to delegate, and then also accept help when it's offered to you. Now, I personally, and I think you tend to be this way too. <laughs> yes.、Um, I like to be in control of things. I like to, you know, make sure things are done the way I want them to be done and by a certain time.、Um, 
Um, so it can be really hard to delegate um, and it can also be really hard to accept help from people. But one easy thing that you can do to start mm -hmm. um, is just to delegate kind of a low priority task to someone else. Mm -hmm. So when you see that being done and you kind of have that sense of relief that, okay, maybe I can let it go and someone else can take care of it. <laughs> um, it's a little bit easier than to, you know, accept help from yeah. a few more people. Yeah. And That's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, I even get, when you have a potluck and, you know, or whatever, I always try to organize it so that we don't get 10 desserts, you know, I mean, because that's important, yes. right? Or if I'm having a party and people want to bring something, um, I usually have everything that I want in a certain way. And so have them bring wine or mm -hmm. have them bring a candle, you know, I mean, whatever. It doesn't have to be something for your, your food. So. Right. Yes, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. No, not at all. Another important thing to remember is to breathe because when we get stressed out, we mm -hmm. often go into that shallow breathing mode, um, which is not as relaxing as the nice deep breaths. So you can even get apps on your phone that will help you time your breathing so that it's a little bit more relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always important kind of along the same lines as the rest to make sure you're breathing properly and resting properly. Yeah. And spend some time by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, get away from everybody. Curl up somewhere where it's quiet with a hot drink and maybe a book or an audio book or something. Or even just breathe and enjoy, you know, what you're looking at because mm -hmm. it, it goes by so fast. And if you don't, you know, it's kind of like your wedding, right? Oh. So you're all so <laughs> busy and distracted. And it's like, it's over with and you don't remember any of it. I don't remember that. So yeah, don't do that to yourself. So yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one is applicable to anyone. Listen to music. Whether or not it's holiday music, it doesn't matter. But we all know listening to some great music, relaxing music um, can really shift your mood in an instant. Yes. And speaking of music, yes. Yes. Her husband is just awesome with anything electrical or whatever, or digital and all that kind of stuff. So we found a um, a list of calming Christmas songs on Pinterest, and we'll put that on our Pinterest board too. And uh, Jim went out to his Spotify account and put them all together for us into a list. And I think he just called it Cozy with Jill and Lisa, right? I believe so. So you can search for that and mm -hmm. you can actually listen to it. Um, and we'll put a link too, so you can you get it from Facebook. So, um, you know, and it's all different types of music, but it's all fairly low key and, you know, lyrical and um, yeah, real fun. It's a nice variety. It is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we've got a couple more things here. You should keep your holiday expectations realistic. Um, mm. If you're expecting things to be so grand and so out of this world, chances are you'll be disappointed and that will probably stress you out even more. <laughs> um, so, you know, going into something, not having any expectations and then being delightfully surprised mm -hmm. um, is a great way to approach things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes mistakes or things that go wrong actually are the most memorable things about the event or can lead to something really cool. Yeah. So don't, um, most any artist will tell you, don't worry about the mistakes because you can probably find some sunshine in that mistake. Yes. So, mm -hmm. And speaking of mistakes, the last one on our list is practicing self-compassion. Mm. Um, so it's not about perfection. Try to remember that. Um, you know, be kind hearted and empathetic. Um, and, and don't, don't be too critical of yourself. Just oh. kind of go with the flow as much as you're able. And that will definitely make things less stressful. Yeah. And try to have, do that with your family and friends. Christmas time can be yes. stressful, um, because you're with people that you don't normally see, or, you know, maybe it's, you know, a little argumentative or combative or whatever, but, you know, just relax and let it fall off and change the subject if something comes yeah. up, you know. And a lot of people have a hard time if they've lost a loved one this time of oh, year. Oh, it's really so difficult. So being, you know, compassionate um, really mm -hmm. can go a long way yeah. as far as that goes too. For sure, because that first Christmas is always so difficult mm -hmm. for people and actually the second and third, you know, yeah. and it, you're going to miss them forever. So, yeah. yeah. So, well, that was a great list. Yes, and we've got a fun um, bucket list of winter <laughs> self-care topics to follow that up. This kind of goes along with our autumn bucket list mm -hmm. that we did last month, but this is a fun one for winter self-care. 
Now, the first one that I'm going to talk about here is one that、um, I would argue is not for me.、Um, so the suggestion is to send out holiday cards to your loved ones. You know, I used to send out holiday cards to about to a list of people that was about three pages long. Oh my gosh! And that just made me so stressed、yeah. out, like trying to get them all out before the holidays.、Mm-hmm. So about three years ago, I cut that list down to about a dozen people,、mm-hmm. um, and it's just so much more enjoyable.、Yeah. I've、yeah. done the same thing,、um, and really now these days with social media, you're in contact with everybody,、yeah. and so maybe it's the older folks、mm-hmm. who maybe don't know what's going on, but pretty much everybody does. So、yeah. you know, safe paper, safe postage. <laughs> yeah, and a few other great things、um, that are self care reminders for the winter: stay hydrated and start a water log. In your journal, which I think is great because it's so important to stay hydrated、yes. and drink your water all year long. But in the winter too, when things tend to be so much drier,、mm-hmm. decorate your place with twinkling lights because what what is more delightful than you know lights、yeah. at the holidays? Yeah. Invest in a few winter wellness must-haves. So think about things like a humidifier.、Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's a nice weighted blanket or a nice cozy wool throw,、mm-hmm. um, or some really good hand cream、mm-hmm. too. Good slippers too. Yeah,、oh, like good slippers. Slipper socks.、Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Complete a random act of kindness. Ah,、oh, so important.、Mm-hmm. Go to a festive event like a tree lighting.、Mm-hmm. You know, let somebody else do the work and still get all the enjoyment. Exactly. Out of it. <laughs> Look at holiday decorations in your neighborhood. Just go for a drive for a half hour in your neighborhood and、yeah. check out all the lights. Have a cozy night in in your PJs and a holiday candle. Donate blankets and food to an animal shelter. I'm、that's、surprised that's on your list, Lisa. <laughs> One of my favorite things. We we definitely appreciate that at the Humane Society. Yes. <laughs> Watch a cheesy holiday movie.、Mm-hmm. Uh, that's oh my gosh! To me, the holiday mo- movies make the holidays.、Mm-hmm. So yeah. And you know exactly how they're going to、oh, end. Of course we do. It's still, but... it's still fun to watch、yeah. them. <laughs> and a couple other ones here to finish off our list. Um, see a holiday musical or a show near you.、Mm-hmm. Just take in that experience of being in the audience and letting someone entertain you for the holidays、yeah. is so enjoyable. Rest and take a nap. And lastly, create a self care kit for traveling, which I thought was a great idea.、Mm-hmm. For me, that includes. Um, my favorite hydrating lotion, a nice cashmere wrap, and my slippers go with、yeah. me everywhere that we travel to、mm-hmm. throughout the holiday season. Definitely, that cashmere wrap or any wrap、yes. actually is perfect to take wherever you're going because you don't know if it's going to be cold.、Mm-hmm. Um, and on the plane, it's wonderful because、yes. um, you know it always get cold. So yeah, that's a great that's a great idea to do that. And let us know what would be on your winter holiday self care bucket list. Yes, absolutely.、Um, let's see, was there something else? I was going to mention. Oh, we were going to talk about books, right? Oh yes. So one of my favorite books、um, for the holidays. This is one that I got from a thrift store when I was an activity director at a senior living facility.、Um, it's called A Celebration of Christmas, and it has so many wonderful.、Um, Stories about different ways of celebrating the holidays around the world, throughout the different、um, decades of time, and it's also got wonderful classic holiday stories like the gift of the Magi.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's got、um, a visit from Saint Nicholas, the poem that everybody knows this time of year. Sure,、um, and it also has the st-、um, the letter that originated. I think it was in the New York Post. Um, yes, Virginia. There、it、is a Santa, Santa Claus. Claus.、Yeah. Um, I just love this. I love sharing it with family and friends,、um, and it's one of my favorites for the holidays. And it's similar to you know watching those movies, those old favorites.、Yes. This would be really great to read out loud with you know some of your family and friends along.、Yes. So there are even some、um, like、uh, activity and craft、oh. ideas in here that have kind of like a cultural、sure. um, tradition to them, which is、yeah. also kind of neat. I think kids really appreciate that. I mean, if you're going to ask them, they're going to choose to sit in front of the TV and play video <laughs> games. But if you say, okay, you can play video games. For 
how many hours mm -hmm. or whatever. But after that, we're going to do this. I'll bet you they remember that. Yes. Way more than they remember the video game that they were playing. So make it special. Make it yeah. different, you know. Um, kids really don't know. They don't understand until you show it to them. Yeah. So, you know, please do something like that. So there's a couple of things I want to recommend. Um, there's a video called The Snowman. And I think it came out, oh gosh, it probably must have been late 90s maybe. And it's all animation with beautiful um, soundtrack track and it's just about a little boy who makes a snowman who comes alive at night and together they fly to the North Pole and they go uh, with Santa to deliver toys and then they come back in the morning but it's just so sweet and it's so kind and it's just a lovely lovely movie mm -hmm. so it's just short maybe a half an hour but it can make your holiday I think it gives you that warm cozy feeling which is really good I definitely want to check that out yes you, you have to watch it mm -hmm. um, and then the other one that I always like to listen to is um, the night, not the night before Christmas, but the Christmas Carol that Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart, reads. He did a one-man show on Broadway for a number of years. He has the whole book memorized. He plays all the characters, and they're wonderful. Mm. So he did a CD of it, and now you can get it on audio. Um, but it's perfect when you're traveling mm -hmm. to listen to that. It really gets you in the mood. And um, so, yeah, that would be my recommendation for Christmas things, I would love too. to listen to that to that cozied up next to the fireplace. Oh, for sure. Oh, that yeah. Would be wonderful. Yep. Yep, definitely. So, all right. Well, we're winding things down here. Um, we found a poem. And we used to end Ask Aunt Anne with poems all the time. And we haven't done it here, but we both are suckers for poems. So yes. we found this one and we thought it would be appropriate. It's short and sweet, but I think it'll put you in the mood. Um, why don't you close your eyes and just listen and visualize all the things that the poem talks about. <clears throat> Frost upon a window pane and softly falling snow. Warmth beside a crackling fire while biting north winds blow. Books and blankets, steaming tea, the soft glow of an ember. Candlelight and cozy nights, the magic of December. And that is written by Laura Jaworski. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Mm -hmm. So um, from us, have a happy holiday season and a wonderful new year and um, stay cozy. Yeah, we'll see you next year. <laughs>